And of course, for landing on Janus, we will bring Abelard. Uh, I think Heinrichs gets benched. Jay, you can come along. Uh, Heinrichs, you can stay on the ship, I think. I think it's always going to be either Heinrichs or Abelard. Jay, I'm not too sure about, but she, as an officer, she does make serious contributions to the team. Cassia and Argenta, are obviously, and Pascal are all there for a reason. I'm not sure who I would drop out of those three if I needed to make room for anyone else. I'm starting to feel... Starting to feel, like, really pressed. Like, I would love a team of seven, let's put it that way. But, you know, if they gave me a team of five, I'd be saying I really didn't want a team of six. And if they gave me seven, I'd say I want eight. I just don't want a Dira. I, I hope she's enjoying... I hope she's on a nice black ship to uh, get sanctioned. Or the Inquisition might have popped. I don't know. Not my, Mine is not to reason why. Mine is just to get her off my ship and stop her killing my crew and endangering my vessel. Let's land on Janus. Okay, we've got nobles. Ooh, Eldari sniper. Am I going to talk to a diplomat who's going to get shot by a sniper? Is that a meme? Is that going to happen again? Vistenza Viat. A lavishly dressed noble woman in an opulent silk gown watches you with an expectant air, but then gracefully bows her head. Gem encrusted implants protrude from her arms and necks. I welcome you on behalf of my noble house. My name is Vistenza Janus Viat Ab Aram Af Coronis. By the grace of the Emperor and the will of the rogue trader, Theodora von Flancius, I serve as planetary governor and imperial commander-in-chief of this world. And Ra regards to you, noble Vesarian. It's been years since your last visit to Janus. I am glad to see you again. It's a good sign when a rogue trader seneschal does not visit a subject planet for a long time. Isn't that correct, Lady Viat? It means the governor is taking care of all matters and there is no need for the seneschal to interfere. In truth, your arrival in the place of the esteemed Lady Von Valancius is quite unexpected. Admit it, you are awed to behold such an illustrious figure whose fame has spread as far as the backwater that is the Cronus Expanse. Theodora Von Valancius is dead, I am now the head of the dynasty. I hope my coming in Theodora's stead has not disappointed you too much. Not in the least, your lordship. I am delighted after all these years to once again welcome to my world. Oh! Okay, so we almost had a situation where a diplomat died again, but the sniper appears to have uh, stopped us from being, or stopped the governor from being assassinated. Ah, oh, shit, so we've got rebels shooting guards. I assume they're rebels. Give me strength! Five hostiles. They're just called servants. Wonderful. Rebellious servants. We have been ambushed. Oh, come on, guys. You're not even trying. Five servants? Me? Argento, express my disappointment to these fools. Me? Got him. Oh, and now reinforcements arrive. Your Lordship and Preservers, are you alright? Do not fret, lay person. We have grown used to outrageous slovenliness among the wardens of every world we visit. <laughs> oh, Pale Grayness is strangling this peasant like a noose. His words are laden with fear for our well-being, and yet he fears for his own even more. I can shoot him, you incompetent and net, net useless piece of grok shit. What is the point of you if, if I can be attacked in the governor's own estate? Where did Governor Viat go? You sure be flogged for negligence. Who were they and how did they gain entry to the uh, state? Where did the governor go? The governor is safe, protected by walls and wardens. Please follow me, I will escort you to her personally. <laughs> oh... I can't start summarily executing subordinates because the replacement's probably going to be just as useless. Fine, Leon. Wait, does that mean I don't get to loot the area? What about my loot? My loot, bro. 
All right, well, I'm inside. Uh, I can speak with the governor with my entourage or alone. I will speak to them with my uh, entourage. Because Abelard has to introduce me. Your lordship accept my abject apologies for the reprehensible stunt that spoiled the reception. Even in my worst nightmare, I never could have imagined... I can say I don't care about your apologies, I could have been killed, your local fuss is of no concern to me. Abhorrent actions, I thought firing at moving targets was part of the ceremony. Or you can stop a pol- I'm not letting her off the hook. Let, like, I'm not letting her off the hook, I assure you, your lordship, I would never, I beg you, give me a chance to prove my loyalty and explain myself. Like, I'm not gonna- One of your wardens helped us in battle. A superb shot. Who is it? What's happening on this planet? Footfall station is on the verge of starvation. Can Janus... Who's the warden? You must be referring to Yurilet. Our chief ally in the struggle against the rebels. I've turned a blind eye to her horrific mutations. Given the undoubted... You're talking about an Eldari. She's not a mutant. She's using an Eldari long rifle. She's got Eldari features. You see, Eurolet comes from the local degenerate stock of this world and knows Janice like the back of her hand. She has proved several leads. Although I admit, uh, at times I'm tempted to send her away from the estate, her unnatural unnaturalness means that speaking with her always leaves me feeling uneasy. Such a gaunt, unfeminine feature, figure, and so tall. She's an Eldari. The strange movements, the strange looks, abnormally large eyes, un a naturally distorted face. The point it is, it's an El... It's an Eldar. <laughs> Jay's like, do I have news for you, Shireen? But as for your ears only, I will tell you when we meet our mysterious new ally. I know, I figured it out. It's an it's an Eldar. If you wish to speak to Yurilet, you will find her outside in the Orangery, most likely by the gazebo. She prefers to keep her distance from others. What is happening on this planet? Several months ago, uprisings broke out on Janus. I was not even notified at first. Gripping war worms are for wardens to worry about. You know how I feel about that. I want to know about all rebellions. Governors who don't want to know about rebellions are bad governors. Like, it's pretty basal. Alas, I only learned what was happening after the miscreants began targeting noble families, and it became apparent that what the administration's account referred to as unrest were in fact organized attacks on infrastructure and society leaders. Because you didn't deal with it early. They've already brought 13 agri-complexes to a halt and have now moved on to assassination attempts. Can Janice fulfill its foodstuff supplies under current conditions? I risk angering your lordship, but this is nothing compared to shamelessly deceiving you. Let us consider the situation disparately. Even the most talented logistic experts of the Edmund Stratum are unable to guarantee stable tithes when shuttles are wary of landing at the spaceport and the terrified peasants are indulging a dangerous minority within their ranks. Until the usual order on, of, of things on Janus is restored, any trade is nigh impossible. Considering what has occurred, your visit is a true blessing. You see, Janus does not have its own fleet. We could organize a planet-wide search if we had ships at our disposal, ships like yours. Perhaps you'll find ways to support your subjects in their hour of need. You want me to go off and catch some rebels for me? I promise you, gonna... let, me, let me have a look through the options. There are many options. I like many options. There's an option here to arrest her which I'm tempted by, but I just don't have enough local information yet, and I don't want things to collapse. But I'm I'm deeply tempted, and I hope this option comes up later. Um, I'll get to the bottom of this. I'm sure Rebels will have something to say to the master of their world. If any of those who attacked the estate had survived, perhaps they could have been a valuable source of information, but you made an example of them for the rest of the foolish rabble. I, as well as my retinue, are at your service. My secretary is checking the staff as we speak, removing all traces of the attack on the estate. A Magos, who is responsible for the agronomic efforts on the planet, is also here. And of course, there is my aide, Yurilet, the Elder. I have no doubt she'll be delighted to share her knowledge with you. I'll ask about footfall. Yeah. We lose more provisions to gnawing pests every cycle than those on football could eat in their entire lives, but can we ship the provisions to football? Not a chance. Yeah. 
It's embarrassing to Jay says it's embarrassing to admit that Vladime is better at doing his job than Lady Viad as at keeping her world in check. Who is the person standing next to you? One of my ladies in waiting, Amelia. To bathe in the light of your greatness is a true honor, rogue, rogue trader. I'm suspicious of the Maid of Honor. Chekhov's gun. I'm suspicious of the Maid of Honor. Janus is a remarkable world, both in terms of its vast potential and in terms of the work that was carried out to transform it into an agri-world. Janus regularly rebels against us, earthquakes, tsunamis, and emergence of new pests and weeds that invade the arable land. What do you grow on Janus? I'm going to ask a couple of questions. Okay, I'm exploring my pretty sweet planet here, and we've got a little cutscene. Look, we can go down to the water. Could we perhaps take a brief detour for a close look? Okay. Cassia wants me to take her to the beach. Forgive me for so boldly stealing you away from the others, it's just I simply wish to spend a brief moment admiring the breathtaking nature of this place. Within the station's walls, I could never hope to see anything like this. Aww. She's uh, being overwhelmed by just being outside. I imagine you've never set foot in seawaters before, would you like to give it a try? I'm going to give her a flower. We need to make her happy so that she doesn't cause our people to commit suicide. So, let's be nice. The petals are like velvet, the fragrant, both sweet and spicy. Fascinating specimen. Although I suppose I simply ought to thank you for it. The flower is beautiful indeed. Um, Alright. Um, do we want to recommend she take a swim? I mean, she's got gills. Not sure they're functional. Yeah, let's, let's, let's step into the water a little bit. I just... She's been bottled up in one space station her entire life, just getting her to experience happiness, to ease up a little bit. It'll make her a better leader, a more comfortable person, and like I said, will cause fewer of my uh, crew to want to off themselves. At least that is my logic. The sea, it's wet and cold, tiny pebbles stick in my feet. I never thought it would be so agreeable and a little startling. Thank you for encouraging me. See, we're winning! This place eases the soul, wouldn't you agree? It's time we're on our way. And hopefully her next painting is a painting of the ocean. See? Cassia. Ooh, goods. Even better. Another Chartres Pendant. Don't need another Chartres Pendant, but you know what? Okay. Okay, here we go. I found the Mutant, in inverted commas, and this is the most Eldar Eldar that ever Eldar. But let's go talk to Yirilet. Iliad Lenevis greets you, Elantark. Yeah, the bizarre creature in front of you only vaguely resembles a typical human. Elongated body, slender limbs, pointed features. It's an Eldar. Specifically, I believe an Eldar this? Ranger. Xenos? Oh, she devoured them. Mingling with humans. Don't your lot think themselves above that? Anyway, it doesn't change the fact that it's a Xenos that's been cozying up to Viet, not a mutant. There is fear in your words. You know what I am, and so I may no longer follow the shadowed path and must be direct. Yes. My soul is nothing kin to yours. Your kind call us Xenos. As if we are all as one. I came here to protect the Lilithon by assisting the governor against her enemies. Will you hear me? <laughs> I can you just shoot her. By your precepts. Um... To be honest, the only part I understood was that you have no desire to fight that we have in common. I will speak to you, but keep your hands where I can see them. 
let's let's just say we have nothing to. Uh... I have banished the shadow of doubt from your thoughts regarding my nature. Now you will answer my question: Why have you sought me out? Why are you helping the governor? This world is in distress. I wish to protect it from unnecessary suffering. What do you know about the rebels? Only that they threaten the established order. There is much risk to this world should the ruler die. Interesting. She's choosing her words carefully. Yeah, I bet she's choosing her words carefully. Uh, do you know who's behind the uprisings? There is a malevolence here that drives your kin down the path of violence. How did you come to Janus? The world you call Janus was once created by the will of my kin. Okay, she's saying it's Janus, I not Janus. I have far more right to be on the Lilithon than any of you. I am Ellen Tark. My hand parried the death promised to the ruler of these people, and I aided you in battle against the Lost Ones. Why do you call me Ellen Tark? Because that is what you are. Elantark means stranger from the darkness amidst the stars. It must be infuriating her you talking to us. on flame-winged machines in a dark time when the air of the planet is soaked in blood and pain. Will you be the one to bring peace to the Lilithon? Because whereas we use language, the Eldara use language and psychic connection and the smallest hints of uh, facial movements, starts, everything to communicate so talking to us is like talking without tone okay so I've said her the answers to which are either unimportant or wreathed in shadow explore this place speak to those who know a simple task for you and an insurmountable challenge for me since my very appearance provokes fear and suspicion when you learn anything, tell me. Oh no, come with me. I can Perhaps sanction you. Then, then they, then they don't have a problem. You. So be it. I will go with you. I am ready, Ellen Tark. Let us go forth. Interesting. You're let. It okay, so controversial decision here, but I've actually sent Pascal back. The reason is, at the moment. Jai can test tech use at 73 and logic at 70. Pascal can test tech use at 100 and logic at 80. So it's not ideal. But benching um, Abelard would remove our athletics and our tank. Removing Jai would severely undermine our additional skill pack. Now, I didn't know what skill Zerolet has. She does have Law Xenos, which gives her some serious options. She has no ideology. She's also Awareness 80. So she's also going to be rolling some good tests there. But we're going to have a look at Yrilet. I'm not sure she's going to be a good match for my team in general. But let's have a look. She can be Bounty Hunter, Grand Strategist. She's an Operative. Who's already gone through all her levels up. So I think Bounty Hunter's the go for her. With Hunt Down the Prey. I like Hot on the Trail for... Um, I like Hot on the Trail for extra turns. Talents. Does she have unique talents? In my sights grants additional armor penetration. Prescient sight. We need to look at her features. Talent. Yurlet's attack against the target at the start of her next turn cannot miss. Okay, so she picks a target and this next turn... At the start of her next turn. Oh, so we could also give her an extra turn and make her make the shot. Precise attack, perfect spot. What is her inventory like? Eldari long rifle. So we could actually give Yurilet a better sniper rifle that is currently being used by Jai. So if Jai is ever not on the team, then we could upgrade Yurilet. Dodge reduction 30, additional hit chance 20, dodge reduction 30. So Jai's rifle is just more damaging. The difference is dead eye shot only versus not only a dead eye shot. I think 
since Yurilet's main gig is damage, we swap the rifles. We take off the plus 5% damage crit there, and we instead give the tech use gloves. We give Irilet better rifle. We give her the sniper gloves, if I'm allowed to give those to her. Okay, we can't give her sniper gloves. She's picky. Well, we'll give her an Eldari Chainsword as backup. In fact, we'll give her two melee weapons as backup. Because I don't think I have an Eldari pistol I can issue her with. She can do Medicaid, so we can issue her that. She's not going to benefit from any of this. We'll give her plus Medicaid, may as well. And we'll give her the target designator for her dead eye shots. Adaptive antidote just in case. Some med packs. We'll give uh, Jai the Eldari long rifle that we took off Yurilet. So there we are, we've got more damage coming off her now, hopefully. And then she needs a cape. There's plus 10% dodge. I think that's probably the best go. Okay, I've just been exploring and I found an old servant who sees my footsteps and then stabs himself with a needle, which I think is poison, saying, you're too late, Viat's dogs, I am the master of my own fate. When he sees it, he drops the injector with astonishment and seems poised to prostrate himself on the floor before you. It's you, your lordship, the god emperor must have brought you here. I beg you, help the rebels and save Janus. Forgive me, your lordship, if only I'd known it was you. My eyes deceived me. We have little time now, but I swear I'll tell you everything. Throne damn you, old man. Where did you get this stuff? Poison capsules of this sort of popular choice amongst degenerate ash mags who are done with being tortured by mad fanatics or works. Here on Janus, though, there is no antidote. Say whatever it is you want to say. Be quick about it. In the name of the Golden Throne, your lordship, show mercy on the humble workers, the salt of Janus. Save them. The Stens of Iat, the untouchable governor, the leader of the nobility, is creating something monstrous behind closed doors. She uses the Imperium's interests as a smokescreen, purports to be a scholar, but her actions, her actions are poisoning our planet. Did you know the settlements that failed to pay their due tithes uh, have been allowed to pay with people instead. They even deliver them uh, to order, sometimes old folks, sometimes children. I've seen those people. I've seen them being delivered to the estate, and then they're never seen or heard from again. They go into secret rooms, they don't come out again, your lordship, ever. Cassie is like, well, sometimes they're just being taken as servants, but I'm, I'm not so sure. Um, we don't have much time for questions. What else is going on in the settlements? I'll tell you exactly what was told by the people who contacted me. These tires, some settlements have already switched to paying with people. They say the amenable settlements get special treatment from the governor's dogs. They arrange for medicine to be supplied, then security, then they completely isolate them. All contact between those inside the settlement and the outside world is cut off. One lad managed to make it out. He said that people are rotting alive in their strange growths, yellow eyes, stinking like dead bodies. Worse ones were rounded up and taken away. The fellow who escaped, he seemed fine. Within a couple of days of the rebels picking him up, he started seeing monsters instead of people. They had to lock him away from other folks. I see no shadows of deceit behind your words, Yurilet says. I would have noticed. Except with it, whenever Vistenza hosts one of her dances at the palace, she sends me to, away to search for the rebels instead of forests. Into the forest far from human settlements. You accuse the road traders appointed governor of heresy. If your words are false, they themselves are tantamount to heresy. But if what you say is true, if it is true, then your sacrifice will be to your credit, my good man. I swear I'm not lying. Pray for me, holy sister, for me and Janus. I'm not sure I'll last long enough to answer all your questions. What secret rooms? Hidden chambers deep in the palace. I've never seen inside. The servants are allowed in. The ones the governor trusts, they change. She changes them, pretties them up, defiles them. 
I knew I had reason to be suspicious of the ladies in waiting. It was too obvious. Your Lordship, if you'll permit a dying man to make one last request, don't tell anyone that I was the one who unlocked the doors. If they do, they'll, they'll go after my family, my home. I will keep your secret. Please, save Janus. Okay. So, our... A bloke is saying that our governor is... Doing some dodgy shit. Very dodgy shit. My least favourite kind of dodgy shit. Warp shit. Um... Let's just see if I can go inside the mansion right now and have a look. Otherwise, we need to go find the rebels. So he's basically saying the rebels are the good guys. Which is an interesting twist, if true. But I think there's more of a mystery here that needs to be investigated. Oh, and we've also found some security officers saying there's a terrorist hiding in this building. I want to talk to this rebel. Okay, so let's talk to the guy. Because after talking to that servant before, I'm, I'm interested. It wouldn't surprise me if Theodora was in with some shady shit that she would appoint a governor who was likewise doing the dodgy. Um, firstly, Cassia, if you'd examine the door. So formidable. Okay, so Jai might be able to get us inside, but I can go Perun. I am Perun, road trader and sovereign of this planet. In the name of the Emperor, open this door. We just yelled at the rebel to let him in. The rebel looks at you amazement, it is really you. Your lordship have mercy, you are the sovereign of this planet, only you have the power to save us. Youth is a time of recklessness, I heard that said more than once in the scholarly progenium. But youth is also a time of directness, let us listen to this young man before we judge him. Save you from what? From Governor Viat. Everybody here knows that she's doing what she's doing to us. We've put it up with her for a long time, hoping that somebody would intervene and help us, but no one ever did. She's turned the whole world into a slaughterhouse. People are rounded up like rocks from the settlements, supposedly to go to the palace, and they're never seen again. Her servants pour something over the fields, and then people lose their minds. They start hearing voices and seeing evil spirits. And while we're dying, she's sitting behind her white walls. Sacrifices, madness, pain, and death. Even in so primitive a society as this, such rites seem senseless, not worthy of such efforts. What is it? A random work of nature or something darker? I was taught the peasants have a tendency to exaggerate their suffering. But this young man, vermilion thorns pierce every centre of his body, grey shackles behind hands, feet and neck, there are no lies in his world, words, only terror and desperation without end. You're telling me people are seeing evil spirits? Yes, others are going feral and attacking their loved ones. People say that in some settlements they've stopped upholding imperial law altogether. Imperial law and the law of basic human decency. People are turning into animals. Who's buying the rebels? Your Lordship, I beg you, don't ask me that. I can't sell it, my brethren. It's over for me, but the others, I won't betray them. I'm going to say there will be no end of this war and planet until I get a handle on the situation, but to do that, I need to meet with your leader. As long as you keep your word. I've never been to their camp, none of us have. Only the chief saw one person from their base. He came a couple of times bringing weapons and orders, but he said he represented greater forces than we could imagine. And he said the governor's dogs will pay for their, repri for their reprisals in the settlements. We have it all worked out so that if anyone gets caught, the others aren't caught with them. But I swiped the chief's box. I thought after I killed the governor, I could use the message coordinates to find the base and hide out there. That's everything I know, your lordship. Interesting. So I can let him come with me? I can give him an easy death, or I can dogmatic shoot him. Huh. I feel like we don't want the governor to be suspicious, but I, let's see what happens if I try and say he's my prisoner. Your Lordship, I honour your bravery. Please allow me to get rid of this rat for you. Dogmatic, this man will serve Janus yet. Consult your advisor and see to it that he's made a useful servitor. This man is under protection. 
See that he is held in custody until his fate is decided by a fair trial, or escort this man to the perimeter of the estate. He is free to go. I'm not sure he's actually a rebel. I think what I want to do is put him under protection. And this is really harsh. But if it turns out the rebels are bullshitting, it means he's still in custody. Because there's no way a fair trial is going to... I'm hoping our cat wouldn't be like, the trial happens and he's been shot while you were gone. Put him in custody. Uh, if he's assassinated in custody, we basically know that the governor is rotten. If the rebels turn out to be the baddies, then he's in prison. And... Yeah, no, this is the, I think this is the way to go. We could let him go, but then we could have a double bluff situation where it turns out the rebels are actually the bad guys. So let's put him in prison. <laughs> With deepest respect, your lordship. Uh, and then he's like, thinks better of it, and he says, you will be done. Hope you turn out okay, kid. And I hope you're not actually a secret heretic. Because the danger was, if we let him go... Demolition 5%, wow. I might have to come back here with um, Pascal later to get that open. Uh, Jai is able to use tech use, but not as well as he is, and the tests on this difficulty are really hard. As I'm going to back to my ship to basically go hunt the rebels, or find the rebels, as you once sought my help, now I'm seeking yours. Time has come to dispel the final shadows on our path. I have a hidden truth for you. I know a great deal about those who are disturbing the peace, and I also know where they are hiding. Allow me to show you the way on the condition that you bring me to them. <laughs> Jai says, you're kind of usually a bit better at bargaining. Always offer what can't be obtained with uh, torture or thrones. Why did you not say anything? No other path was open to me, but now our paths are aligned. And my decision was motivated not by caprice or, or caprice, but by reason which compels me now to be honest with the person who will fix all of this. Everything you've discovered, everything you've learned from your kind, they are all traces of the same calamity, a calamity that will eclipse all strife and wars on the face of this world. All signs were plain to see, but I was here, and the Monkai failed to recognize the coming storm. Please follow me, Perun, you must, if this world truly matters to you. What calamity are you talking about? You're still holding back information. I'll reveal the truth soon. Eldar keeping secrets? Really? Where it seems evil has made its nest. Have patient Ellen Tuck and trust me. If one of the Imperium's world is in danger, so be it. I will follow you. Oh, we just teleport there. All right. Okay, so we are out in the forest of Janus following an Eldar's tip-off. Uh, which is a very dangerous thing to do. But you know what? We're doing what we're doing. There's a go down option over there. Let's scout forward first. Uh, but if there is a skill check, that makes me think potential loot. Alright, going down that rock has just taken us straight to the rebels. Let's see if they open fire straight away or if we can talk. Show them no mercy. Damn it, we're under attack. Kill the intruders. Well, I don't like that. Some want to say, hey, don't shoot, stop, lower your weapons. That's not ideal. Not ideal at all. Okay, I have positions. Whoops, no I don't. Yes, I do. Let's go. We have Abelard, so it's time for the Abelard Starburst. Victory is imminent. Which allows everyone to get into their positions. Argenta will be in this covered position here, engaging absolutely everyone and everything all the time. Uralet is also going to need a covered position uh, as long as this rebel can be taken down. She'll be flanked by some enemies, but she's got range at the very least. Uh, and unfortunately Argenta otherwise has the primary piece of cover, so it's going to have to be what it is. Although actually maybe she can afford to step back just a little bit for the moment. And what we can do is immediately end the... T oh, we don't have line of sight. Let's immediately end the turn and get hot on the tail on one of these guys. Swiftly... 
It'll have to be probably this guy up here. So let's go Rebel. Because I'm pretty sure when I was leveling her up... I took... Save the kill. Whenever prayer that is been not being tra trailed is killed by an ally, the bounty hunter gains an extra turn. And then let's go cut through a rebel here. Jai. You can also probably snipe. Let's get some frontline zone up here. Range damage. On the range damage team here. There we are. Alright, Abelard. How far can you charge, my friend? Oh, no suitable path. Because Cassia is in your way, is that true? That's very unfortunate, Abelard. Let's go... Fifteen damage there, and swap back to your Thunder Hammer. I would move Cassia down aggressively, but I need to be able to give her extra turns. I might be able to. I have read the of the because Perun will need to get over here in order to do that. Alright. Jai. Problem is I need to get to this square here. Which I think I can do. If I just cancel that movement. I know what I'm doing. Or just do it anyway. Eurolet gets her extra turn immediately. And then goes into probably in my sights. Sharpshooter Rebel. And then Jai can go Vok. Extra turn. Into tanking, because Cassia desperately needs to be able to tank. And then we can blow up a rebel. The ones with the guns are more dangerous to me, I think. But I might just pop tactical advantage in order to nuke this guy here. There we go. That makes her just a little bit safer and feeds us momentum. And then we can turn this into a kill zone for when Argenta opens up on it. Uh, let's move that middle zone. I'd like to, but I can't. You've to here. Okay, Perun is up. Who wants to turn, Argenta or Cassia? Probably Argenta. Need to start getting her raining fire. We've gone up a level, so we now start with five action points per standard turn, which is much better than what we had before. So she's in a covered position. So it's 84% with the bolter. Let's just check the hotshot las gun. 47%, I presume because of the lack of range. Alright, so I reckon... Let's start with a burst. Two kills. It'll go to Perun. 
But I actually think we go straight into steady. Oh, do we do steady superiority? No, we. I think the Cassia Rampage is on the cards. We will max our momentum though. Come on, dude. Get that line of sight. Fantastic. Alright, let's start New King. That gives you a ladder turn. Once again, she cannot necessarily engage. Just designate a target. Move to perfect spot. And in my sights. I don't know if I need to redesignate the sharpshooter rebel, but I will. And then we can go into massacre mode. And the goal here is enough momentum to make Argenta be able to go again. Her wounds are now below her max, so we'll recharge them. She's obviously the best solution to this, so I just figure I'll use the AP to knock it out. 91, that's annoying. She should get one AP refresh for this. High momentum. And she goes to high momentum. I'm to be knock him out. She'll be running out of valid targets at this point, but we'll take what we can. All right, finest hour. Uh, let's go, let's designate a target that we're pretty sure is about to go. We're gonna need to come down off this roof at some point is the only problem. Give Argenta her shot damage, and then try for the bonus turn for Yurlet. Miss. <laughs> Poor Abelard getting shot. Heavily armed rebel. Sharpshooter rebel. The sharpshooter is of course the most dangerous. Beautiful. Oh, so that's how it works. We can stack up, we can stack multiple targets, and then she just takes them and just mercs them. Fantastic. If it's there, oh, but it ends her turn. I need to be careful about that. I need to be careful about that. Sorry, I'm just learning the Eurolet character. If I may. Willpower 117. What has happened to cause you to drop your insane willpower? You've lost your mastery of time stacks, which greatly disturbs me. Alright. Single shot for versatility. Uh, burst fire. into run and gun. Weak. Into bursts. No, into single. Into burst. into reload. Argenta is now solo breaking the action economy, as you have probably noticed. It's 
17. Okay. And we're at 13 stacks. Love it. How about an extra turn? In which you go revel. As the Emperor commands, I act. At 187 ballistic skill. Single. Wild. Sorry, camera keeps jumping back every time I do it. As the Emperor commands, I Nice kill. Go hot on the. I am not. I think we're basically done at this point. I think. Okay, as we've got down to one enemy, we have some Aldari on the field. Your letter saying, "Stop my kin." It is me. Eldari guardians. Okay, so these are Eldari militia. So they're not amazing. 66 wounds, 30% armor, 95% dodge. Shuriken catapults, which are dangerous. Eldari plasma grenades. So, nominally dangerous opponents, but nothing we can't handle. Starting by getting to getting all the advantages we need, including a dodge reduction. Telling Argenta to ignore a whole bunch of cover. And then giving Miss 200 Ballistic Skill herself some extra shooting time. 242 Ballistic Skill. Uh, we'll need to go into Revel and Slaughter. We'll go into Single Shot. 95% shot. 28. Into Wildfire. Uh, might as well kill this guy. And as harsh it is, as it is, if I must. we'll get Yirolette to make the make the shot on the Eldari Guardian, unfortunately. Kin slaying, unfortunately. Unfortunately for her, of course. We're the Imperium. We don't really care. Let's get Yirolette off the... Uh, sorry, Jay off the roof. But I think we'll be able to handle these guys. Because it's basically going to come down to feeding turns with the Argenta that are accurate enough to make a difference. I will not doubt. Let's go wildfire a burst just to get more versatility stacks. That does the job. And then I think it's single shot over here. She's landing the hits. Nothing I can't do. When in doubt, just let Argenta do the shooting for you. All too easy. Okay, he's leaving his position, charging forward. I think that is going to be all she wrote. If it serves. Well, those negotiations went well. I swear on Cain's riven heart, Moran, you will pay for your treachery. May Morai Heg sunder your fate and cast it away. May the blood of Eldenesh flood your throat. Calm down, it's already over, or well, well, who knew that uh, the Tempest was raging beneath that unruffled surface. So, uh, Eldari emotions run incredibly intense. Their emotions are incredibly intense, they have to keep them in check. But of course, when they burst out there, every, it's like everything is dialed up to 11. When they're angry, they're enraged. Uh, when they're calm, they're serene. Everything is ramped up to 11. Calm down, it's already over. Over no Monkai, this path is far from its end. But when we get to Mu Muaran, 
I will make him reveal the full extent of his duplicity and tell me where the truth ends and the lies begin. Please excuse me, Ellen Tark. I allowed the turmoil in my soul to win out over my reason. A sip like that could cost me more than you could ever imagine. Because when the Eldari let their emotions get out of control, they become vulnerable to Slanesh. Long story in the lore. Maybe if we see more Eldari, we'll go through it another time. My very soul. Her soul could be lost. I must be more careful even in the face of tre uh, treachery. Who is Moara, uh, Moaran? What treachery are you talking about? Moaran is the one responsible for the rebellions against the ruler of Janus, but allow me to tell you everything from the beginning. We call ourselves the children of Asurian. Eldari is a number of names of ours. We are the echoes of a great empire that once ruled the galaxy and created new worlds. The planet that you call Janus is one such maiden world, the Lilathan. Okay, so what she's telling us is the Eldari were the ones who probably terraformed this world. They used to have a great empire. Uh, we're entirely within our rights to call the Maiden world our own. So the Eldari think they can claim this world because they were the ones who made it what it is. However, our arrival is a tragedy, not a homecoming. We belong, belonged to a craft world, which is a giant spaceship carrying a civilization. Uh, Kradarak which fell on the border of this star region. Only the provenance of the merciful gods allowed us to escape the fate that befell those whose souls perished amongst the stardust along with our abode. Okay, so their, their craft world's gone. Hey, Perun, if we get a chance, we should check this place out. Even if the craft world was blasted to bits, anyone who finds a piece of it will make a fortune. After the calamity, calamity this planet offered our uh, kin a sanctuary, a place of respite, under the canopy of a forest created by the wisdom of our world singers, living alongside your kind who reap the fruits of our labor with such vulgarity. You came to Janus with the rest of the Eldari? No, my path brought me here later, by another route. It was Moraran who welcomed me here. It was one of the surviving Farseers. Farseers are incredibly powerful psychers. He was with a handful of Asuriani who had escaped death and found a path here. They were outraged when they saw how the Monkai had ravaged our flourishing garden. How are your kin connected to the uprising on the planet? The Asuyani do not enter battles they cannot win. However, it is our power to direct the currents so that the elements themselves wash obstacles and enemies from our path, and so it was in this case. Moara and the Farseer saw a future without the Monkai, and we followed his lead. We simply used the Monkai's passions against them. Their love of freedom of anarchy, their love of domination and violence, stoking enmity between the servants and rulers is easy when your targets are governed by emotions rather than reason. My kin became military advisors to the Monkai who rose up against the ruler of the world. I had a different mission, to become the governor's handler, since the rebels would be unable to get to her until both sides were sufficiently weakened. The ruler of the humans has never seen a child of Asuyan before, and so she, she accepted my lie about being a degenerate branch of Monkai, dwelling far from their own kind. Why did your own kind attack you? I know not the answer to that question. Many cycles have passed since I departed those forests and my kin. They cannot, they cannot have forgotten me, can they? Very unlikely that they have forgotten you. Their memories run long. Why are you telling me this? What brought on this candor? Your arrival has thrown my past into disarray and lifted, lifted the veil of the truth that was hidden from me. While I was shadowing the human's ruler, I failed to see the signs. Signs that there is another threat looming over the planet besides the Monkai's deeds. The threat should be familiar with you as it is to other intelligent species in the galaxy. We call it sl oh, their word for Slanesh, she who thirsts, goddess of chaos. Their ultimate enemy. So the ultimate enemy of the Eldari is Slanesh, both of the Dark Eldar and the normal Eldar. Uh, Slanesh is the one that wants to nom 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 Eldar souls and the different parts of Eldar civilization take different approaches to not being eaten by Slanesh. The Craftworld Eldar keep their emotions in check and hide their souls in spirit stones when they die so that they don't get nommed in the warp. And the Dark Eldar cut themselves off from their psychic connection and use much darker methods to avoid Slanesh um, consuming them. The Monkai are weak in, weak in spirit, they are susceptible to the propositions of he or she who thirsts, and in their drive to attain her poison gifts, they perform perverse rituals in her name. Okay, so the governor's working for Slanesh. The world senses the threat, resists it as much as it is able. The living things that inhabit this world are becoming weapons. Weapons turned against the Monkai, poison plants, rabid beasts. These are all like a blade in the planet's hand as she comes to fight the coming of she who thirsts. Tendrils of corruption may be threading through the world spirit. 
poisoning it even as we speak. But for the corruption to take hold of the planet so quickly requires effort. Effort directed by the will of another. I believe the governor is a thrall to the will of Slanesh. As lamentable, Cassie is saying, as lamentable as it may be, the Imperium's history knows many cases where even the most steadfast followers of Creed would turn away from his light. Perhaps one of these is the flaunts of her undoing. And Jai is suspicious. She's saying, pointy years here spent her days serving the governor, but the moment the wind changed, she started regaling us with tragic tales of their dismal fate. Although there is a grain of sense to her words, I will give her that. Why haven't you killed her already? There is only one crime gra graver than serving Slanesh. It is betraying the children of Asadian for her benefits. Moiran saw the paths. He beheld the future. How could he not see the dark stain on its face? Before I rip this poison seed from the planet's body, I will make Moiran answer me. So I can say... No, make another accusation and I'll shoot you. Maybe she's tainted. We will have to find out for ourselves. I trust your judgment. She will be punished for her betrayal. I mean, it's all sounding pretty convincing so far, but Eldari do mess around. Hmm. It's going to be option three or four. I'm, I'm pretty sure the go I'm reasonably confident the governor is crooked. So what impresses me is that our dynasty... If we can actually hold on to this world, if it truly is an Eldar Maiden world, then the ecology should be incredible, the planet should be so welcoming to life. So if we can hold on to it, this is a pretty impressive place. Uh, there's probably some loot up there. So I'll go explore that in a moment, and then I think we have to cross the river and go find the Eldari. I'm aware there's a path I didn't explore earlier back. I'll just make sure I hit that before we go back to the palace. Alright, we got a second rebel base here. Let's see if these guys shoot at us too. Or whether they're willing to talk. Hey, that looks like a Farseer. And that looks like a Webway Gate. Uh, for those of you not familiar with the setting, this is sort of a Stargate. I'll explain the concept of the Webway later. But suffice to say, that is the best answer to logistical problems you could ever ask for. And that is a Farseer and a whole bunch of Rebels. Monkai, you should not be here. Moiran, I am calling you to account. You said the great danger threatening the planet lurked in the hearts of the Monkai and their greed and ignorance, all while another enemy looming over the world, an enemy whose tracks you should have seen in things to come. She who thirst is threatening this world, and you hid it from us. Answer it. Did you or did you not behold our greatest foe in the future? Did you lie to me? The two Eldari behind Moiran start moving. One looks around at the leader, while the other lets out a cry, muffled under her visor. The rebel beside you cringes as though the Eldari speech causes him pain. He strains to say something, but Moiran makes an imperious gesture, and the soldi meekly straightens up and salutes. He's mind controlling the humans. You're left the outcast. You left the path that was set out for you. You brought unknown Monkai to our refuge, and now you speak to me with unseemly anger. Your long wanderings away from the craft world have altered your mind and tainted your sight. I'm going to say nothing for the moment. My wanderings are the path I have chosen for myself, far from the walls of the craft world. I have seen and come to know things no other Eldari could. Hidden away in their craft world their entire life. Why do you deny my words about Slanesh? Is it because you were lying to me and my kin when you showed us the true path? This Ellen Tark was the first person to discover the coming of Slanesh, uh, one of those whom the Monkai called Chaos Gods. Without him, I would still be deceived by your words. Monkai revealing paths. It's ludicrous. Monkai bring pain and strife in our time and for all time. How can you trust... He, he's a little bit wrong about the history there, but... I'm, I'm going to... Th that's... The sort of thing an Eldari would say, but I, I would dispute that characterization within the law. How can you trust a Monkai after what we taught you, after hearing the sorrowful song of the dying world? It was not chance that brought the craft world down. Monkai destroyed our ancient home, stripped us out of our defenses, doomed us to wander amongst the cold stars. There is just too much pain in their heart, or could it be fear, despair, I cannot tell. The hues are too strange. 
Cassia flinches and a trickle of blood run down her cheek. Yeah, because the emotions are going to be so intense that she's going to be really struggling to read the hues, the auras. Um, so what I'm getting is he is so pissed that humans were responsible for the destruction of his home world that it's blinded him to what is actually going on here. I'm going to say I'm sorry to hear your home was destroyed, but I wasn't there. I know nothing of this calamity. If these words had come from an Eldari, I would have believed them, but you are merely a Monkai, a plaything of your own passions. Any emotion that takes hold of your soul can drive out all trace of reason and honour. You're playing with words and avoiding the questions, says Yurelet. The planet is under threat from our eternal foe, and you're more concerned about the presence of the Elantark than the corruption that is flowing through the veins of this world. Did you ever consider the war might be hastening Slanesh's triumph? Perhaps the ruler's servants, in the efforts to protect her, will resort to more and more instruments of corruption. He's basically not hearing it. I gave you purpose, you're let the Earth can't you dare insult me, a farseer. It was a mistake to let you into our circle. You have turned your, our efforts to survive into dust with your own hands. I am a child of Asuyan, Muaran. Not a plaything in the coal hands of fate, which you claim speaks through your mouth. My choice of path is no worse than yours or any other Aldaris, and my path calls me to fight our true enemies, not eradicate the Monkai. If it comes to it, I will stand with them, for this Elantar can see what you are blind to. Interesting. So I think the thing I'm going to say is... I've been thinking about this. My duty is to protect my worlds and my vassals. If Janus is being threatened by the arch enemy, I will fight to the end. The words of a creature whose will is rude, ruled by momentary whims. There is nothing you can do to make me believe in the strength of your convictions. I like option one, I think. I'm overthinking each step, but you know, that's what you're here for. If this world is in serious danger, there is no sense in fighting each other. Let us deal with the common enemy together. The name of that danger is Mon Kai. No, it's not. It's Lanesh. And I will see to whether the planet is purged of those defiling her face. Then again, there is one way to prove to me that the Mon Kai truly do care about the well-being of the planet. Eliminate the ruler of the Mon Kai and relinquish governing of the world to me and my kin. No. Our human helpers will replace the leaders of the Monkai. We will be the ones to govern from the shadows. Uh, no. Because if we put the Xenos in charge... Yeah, no. One, ruining my profitability. Two, um, Inquisition says no. It is not my intention to have my brothers and sisters sit on the council, Monkai. That role will be played by humans. You may choose whoever you wish, as long as they remember who stands behind them and heeds the direction. Ooh, there's a persuasion option. i got to read all these options. One sec. I think the persuasion option is the best option. 80% chance. Rolling at a 110. I cannot give Janus to the Eldari. Humans will only be ruled by humans. But I can promise no harm will come to you. Heavy silence falls between you and the assembled Eldari. Nine experience, three dogmatic. I'm not willing to risk my life, my kin's lives, Monkai. I will steal my soul and try to believe your promise. The governor must die and she must be replaced by new rulers, one not corrupted by... So what I'm saying is the Eldari can stay, but I am in charge. They don't get to rule, I get to rule, but they get to hang around. Okay, so now we have to go kill the governor, apparently. If the governor gets it, then I could go home. Alright, so we didn't have to shoot anyone. I'll see if there's anything more I can talk about here. We've got to level up, and then I've got to go... I have to go assassinate my own governor, apparently, because it's impossible to get good help here. <laughs>